Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Because Josh Kim is an introvert. And then Zuckerfucker is an introvert. Elon is an introvert. Bill Gates is an introvert. And what normal and, and, and so is um, Warren Buffett. But what happens is those introverts, let's say that on a scale from one to ten, they're three or fours. Uh, one being the, uh, the most uh, weak, insignificant, insipid introvert. And when you make a 50, 100, or whatever million, and, and you, you have successes that you can look back on, you start going towards the other end of the introvert scale. And because Bill Gates is pretty outspoken now. Warren is pretty outspoken now. Elon is pretty out, but they're still introverts. You get them on a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I mean, uh, nobody, uh, unless you're talking, nobody's talking. Dan Locke is an introvert. You get him in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you're the only one talking. But in, when he's like an actor, when he gets on a stage and he's had a lot of success and he's made quite a bit of money. And so there are very, very, you're right. You all have it in you. But in the beginning, it's like, for those of you that have uh, been camping and you know, and you know how to start a fire when you, you do the piece of wood like this and okay, there's a spark there, but you got to find it. So go ahead. Yeah. So basically, I was, I was actually waiting for the YouTube to turn on so I could say this, all right? Well, they, we shut our YouTubes off. No, no, I, I want it on. I want it on. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. But our YouTubes aren't on, on YouTube right now. Oh, that's fine. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, later, because they're going to they're gonna hunt because you down like dogs. They, got, they, got, they have dogs and cops at the door, so when you leave. Yeah. Because, like, if I don't say this over YouTube, then it's, it's just me being more of a fucking cunt, all right? It's like waiting to, like, all the cameras are off, and then you're saying it so there's 16 people, 17 people that can hear it. That's bullshit. Like, I, like I fucking sat there like yesterday with this fuckhead over here, fucking blabbing his little fucking mouth, and I still fucking sat there smiling, looking at him. I hear it, and I fucking, out of all the places I, I hear it and I feel it, I feel it most here. And it's because, Mr. Penny, you don't know, like, you are like my father. You are my fucking dad. It's just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't fucking, I couldn't stand him. I wanna fucking kill him. Your dad. I wanna kill my fucking dad. I wanna kill my fucking brother. I wanna kill a fucking lot of people. You have no fucking idea. That, 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 that little hatchet over there, that little fucking... I used to carry fucking machetes to school. I used to fucking smash everyone. And then fucking over the last fucking 20 years, I went into like this corporate world. Oh, because I studied to be a lawyer, I fucking softened it down. I have fuckwits over here fucking talking my fucking ear off. Talking to me, why? Because you want him to be your fucking chairman. He's not going to be a chairman because you're a fucking idiot. You know? And then fucking, I just neuter it down and fuck. And then, like, out of this whole fucking room, there's only one guy I fucking probably relate to the most, right? That little fucking shit over there. That fucking rage. Okay. And that's it. That's what I want. I'm, I want it on fucking record. I'm not gonna fucking, I'm not gonna tolerate it no more. You know? Like, I like people. I like people because I like myself. But, like, I can't stand these fucking human beings, like, it is fucked up what you say. The world is fucked up because I still rather have my dad be my dad because I'm fucking harder than fucking everyone here, right? Because I've seen all the other guys in, in Sydney, in Australia. They fucking grew up like pussies. And then I became a fucking pussy because I'm, I'm not fucking being who I am. And that's it. Softness and pussiness rubs off. I was raised in the environment that hardly ever saw that. I've said four or five times, sometimes I said it tongue in cheek, sometimes I said it seriously, you wouldn't have gotten past 15, 16 years old where I lived, where I got raised. Because you had to be a hard ass. You had to be a hard ass, you had to be a fight. And uh, the, uh, the, I was the biggest kid growing up until I was about 13 or 14, and then other guys got bigger than me, but not many. But if I hadn't been in that environment, because I have cousins that come from the, we have two sides of the family. We have my mother's side that came across an illegal alien that probably 10 or 20% of them are still illegal. And we got my dad's side who was born in the United States uh, and the uh, education 
was their way out of the barrio, and so we have uh, some accountants, mostly teachers, uh, college professors, etc., PhD kind of people. Uh, but there's two sides, and the two sides. All these years, I'm 75 years old. The two sides have never mixed. They've never been to the same party, the same Christmas. Each side has their own Christmas parties. Each side has their own Thanksgiving parties because the snooty, well-educated side thinks that the other side is trash. And they are. They're Mexican, uneducated trash. Um, but my Mexican, uneducated trash made me tough. Everybody on the other side of the family is a wuss. A wuss. They come and take your wallet and spit in your. Somebody would come and take their wallet and spit in their face. They wouldn't do anything. Remember that test. What would you do if somebody came and I forget the exact words? What'd you do if somebody came and spit in your mom's face, your girlfriend's face, whatever the words were? Um, and ninety-eight or ninety-seven percent of the people that answer the test worldwide wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't do anything. And that's the state of the world now. A, a real example of it, going back to world, before World War II, is when the Prime Minister of Britain went to make a deal with uh, uh, Hitler, and he came back and he got off the plane and he, he shook this piece of paper saying there will be no war in Europe, and uh, Hitler's agreed not to invade all these. Four days later, Hitler <laughs> invaded Poland and all these things, and because we, the world has gotten wussy. It's gotten wussy. We all have it in us, but it's how hard you're willing to dig for it, how hard you're willing to scrape, how hard you're willing to, not everybody can start a fire that way. Your hands get raw, you know, how hard you're willing to do it. And it's no different here. The people that stay focused first, the longest. Getting focused first isn't any big task. Staying focused the longest is. And the ones that have stayed focused the longest have made the most money. Marcus Bauer is a classic example. Um, but he had the advantage of being a world-class athlete, and he knew what it was uh, to not win a gold medal. And so he has put all his aggression uh, that he uh, wasn't able to uh, come to fruition in athletics uh, and making money. And he's, he's done a hell of a job. He's done a hell of a job. Uh, what else about Mr. Ford? Yes, sir. I love, how, sorry. I love how he had a, a vision to put an automobile in every, well, get everyone to own an automobile. He had a vision, and I don't even think it was um, an American citizen's dream yet. It but, wasn't and so, at that time. And his vision was a reality, and he was seeing it for people even dreaming it. But not only did he do that, he enabled them to see the dream and then put in the financial means or gave them a means by which they could realize that dream. Yeah, but the, 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 the sidebar to that, and they only allude to it briefly, is he needed an extra uh, uh, force to buy his cars, an extra universe. And he had, I don't, I don't know, 40,000 employees or 20, whatever he had. Well, he made it affordable. The other thing I don't think they brought out in the film, he, he was the first one to have a payment plan. And so he allowed his... He paid him a daily wage. It was a living at that time. I think it was $5 a day. But $2 a day could go towards the payment of a car. And so he, he couldn't sell the shit. So the serendipity of it was that he, he developed, one, payment plans, and two, he, he, uh, he gave the working man uh, an ability to have a car, an automobile, uh, which was uh, new. And, I mean, uh, Steve Jobs... He didn't give the working man necessarily because I think, even though I don't buy Apple stuff, I don't know how much it costs, but I'm told it's expensive. Whereas Apple, when it started, it was more expensive than the regular stuff, but it wasn't as expensive as it is now. Um, the, um, but, but these are guys uh, that um, cared about themselves first. And what it, did, it wasn't clear and it didn't go into in the uh, Building America thing you saw last night how uh, vicious Ford was towards his kid, uh, Etzel. And, um, the, uh, and these guys are, I mean, it's my way or the highway. And most people that come to the seminar don't live that, my way or the highway. Because you've taught to be a pussy like he alludes to, 
uh, that's what you've been taught. And uh, when, I, when I went off to school, uh, and especially now, because I've told you this before, when I was growing up, sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you. That was the mantra of growing up from the 50s, 60s, and early into the 70s. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Now it's flipped just the opposite. Now, if you call somebody ugly in Britain, it's a hate crime. It's a hate crime. If you call somebody fat in Britain, it's a hate crime. A fucking hate crime. You go to jail, big time jail. But three kids that killed a policeman drugging for a mile behind their car, a 15, 16, and 17 year old, now they're 18, 19, 20, killed the guy. His limbs came off when they were pulling him. Uh, got seven years. Seven years. Another guy in Australia, I think it was, he uh, 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 kidnapped the girl, put her in a suitcase. Maybe, it might have been New Zealand. Put her in a suitcase and buried her. He got 17 years. Both the seven-year sentence and the 17-year sentence uh, will probably get off uh, with a third time served because the prisons are so crowded. The prisons are so crowded. So the world is flipped. It's flipped. What else about uh, the, yes, sir, in the back. I want, I want to follow up on what our Australian hatchet man said. Um, it's very interesting that in reality, we probably should spend 10% of the time talking about deals and the rest of the time talking about us as a problem. Because QLA works, but in the end, we spend so much time talking about deals, but we are still the, the issue. Yeah, but well, no, well, the, the seminar is, is transformed, and uh, the mix that we are now has the highest rate of me seeing deals done. In the years gone by, deals, remember I told you we had a 12 year success and a 13 year success. And we've got dozens and dozens and dozens of five to 10 year successes. But I'm not interested in that. Back in those days, because I didn't think I was going to coach this long, I didn't think I'd be here 28 years later, 27 years later. Remember, it's how deep it is that you, until you find it, the you. Now, if you, if, 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 you, if you guys had been raised in different environments, remember, you're a product of your social economic milieu. You're a product of how you were raised. Ed, most things came easy to him by his own admission, right? Oh, he's not talking, but he shook his head, yeah. Okay, uh, nothing came easy to me. Nothing. I mean nothing. Till I went into the military and I found out, wow, I'm fucking pretty tough. And I got through the program, I went through the ranger school, fuck. Not many of us got through. And then they pinned the bars on me. You're a gentleman and an officer by the act of the fucking United States Congress of America. And that was it. That was the beginning of the beginning for me. Because instead of being in jail all the times I was and trying to kill my teacher, blah, 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 you know, and, the, uh, and that was it. You need to find that thing. And in most cases, it's your first deal. Josh Kim was just a loudmouth, introvert, but loudmouth kid until he did his first deal. And then the rest is history. Most are at Josh's end of the continuum, not at Marcus Bauer's end of the continuum. Most of you are closer to Josh than you are Marcus. And that's just the way it is. But I never, I, uh, you know, I, I knew guys like Ed that everything was easy. They got good grades. It didn't seem like they studied at all. Uh, they were super athletes. Blah, blah, blah. They go off to Stanford on a, on a fucking football scholarship or they went off to Notre Dame University. On a... But that wasn't me. I was with a dunce cap. Now, just imagine if you had sat during the six years of grammar school in a corner with a dunce cap almost every day. 
and then they put you in a closet uh, and then waiting for your parents to pick you up. And I used to shit myself. And I just imagine, little kids are ugly, right? And they pull me out of the, and I've got feces on my cake on the back of my pants and urine down my legs. Just, just think of that. Now, in today's, I'd own the United, uh, uh, Los Angeles City School District. I would own them. But now that, that, uh, that can't happen. Pina, you wetback Mexican. Just imagine calling. And, and I told you before, it's not what they say. It's how you interpret it. And my dad just, you know. He wouldn't allow me to feel sorry for myself. Whereas when you go home and you feel bad and your wife puts, well, maybe, puts your, 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 your head on, on their herbism and says, it's all right, honey, it's all right, it's all right. Well, that's wrong. If you want to be a tough motherfucker and shit, rip their heads off and shit down their neck, why do you think I keep emphasizing running towards the gunfire and killing everybody, metaphorically? Because I know you've never even aspired to do something like that. But you have to think that way. Like a lot of kids play video games where they're uh, not only cops and robbers, but military and they're sea, Navy SEALs and shit. Like I think those, all those games are wrong. Because that's not life. You're not getting hurt there. When you get eliminated in the game, it's not because you got a bullet in you. And that's the closest we have to um, that kind of thing. Clayton Ford, who I knew a long, long time ago, was just a nice kid who happened to be a Ford. And of course, he's and Ford set up his company. He's one of the few that still, Ford still controls Ford because they have most of their shares, the voting shares, in the Ford Foundation Trust. And Zuckerberg is following that model. Whereas most of the other companies that were founded by these guys, they don't, you know, they don't control them anymore because they lost control. But old man Ford, who did a lot of ugly things, but all the guys did a lot of ugly things. So the real question is, how much ugliness are you willing to do? That's the real motherfucking question. How much ugliness if you want to be a big motherfucking hitter, you want to be big multi-billionaire, how much ugliness are you willing to do? Murder, I don't recommend, but we've had them in here, believe me, okay? Uh, larceny, you don't have to do larceny. Uh, you don't have to do uh, malfeasance and steal money from the company. And uh, Okay, so we're moving down from the very end of the ugliness. Uh, how much ugliness? I've fired divisions before. Thousands and thousands of people that I put out of work, you know, some of which had to go bankrupt because the government didn't come and bail them out. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, don't, I didn't lose not one fucking hour to sleep. Some of you have never fired anybody in your life. I hope I'm wrong when I say this. Some of you will never fire anybody in your life, and if that's the case, you're going to fail at QLA because the first board is in transition. And if you can't pull the trigger on them, I don't mean literally, but figuratively, you're going to be stuck with guys and gals that take you down the toilet. They take you down. So how much ugliness are you willing to swallow? How much ugliness are your wife willing to swallow to watch you change? How much ugliness is, are your kids, if your kids mean anything to you, or with their thought process, or how they feel? Because you still want to be loved by them. Whereas... Steve Jobs and I didn't even want to be liked by him. At least I admitted the kids were mine. Do you see? But you can still make 50, 100, 200 million dollars and still be liked. I don't know about loved, but you can still be liked. And it's one thing for you to say, I don't care what people say or think about me, and it's a completely different thing to act that way. When I came to Britain, how many Brits do we have in the room? Just one, okay. When I came to Britain, I said, and I was wearing a brown suit, 
I still remember this. I show up at a meeting. Everybody's got dark gray or black suits. I'm wearing a brown, expensive suit. I'm wearing Italian shoes with a, with a point. Nobody's wearing Italian shoes with a point. Brown shoes like that. And uh, somebody, a, a nice guy, uh, took me aside and says, Mr. Pena, you probably noticed that we're all wearing uh, dark suits. And I appreciate it, and I thanked him very much. And so my, dark, my brown suit went down. But I used to say, I'm an American. You can't hurt my feelings. Just give me the fucking money. And in 1981, apparently nobody had ever said that. Probably nobody's ever said it since. And they were, they were, they were uh, confounded. I mean, they, they couldn't believe it. Uh, but I didn't care. You couldn't hurt my feelings. You still can't hurt my fucking feelings. Almost everybody in this room, at some level, they can still hurt your feelings. And some of you will be concerned about, oh, how's this going to affect my family? Most of the LinkedIn my children get, they're trying to trace me down. Most of the friends and shit like that on Facebook, they're trying to chase me down. Not them. So my kids have learned to live with it. They learn to live with it. It's like, I tell you, Bruce Whipple, God love him, uh, He's never complained to me once, but people chase him down. And now he lives in a fucking log cabin in, fucking in, the, in the mountains of Maine. At some, level, at some level. So that's what you have to decide. I'm not telling you to go be like Carnegie and beat people with axe handles. I'm not telling you. But if I can pull you from this block to this block, and I don't know, I'm making this up as I go, Every block I can pull you towards this is 10 times more money. Maybe 100 times more money. Maybe 1,000 times more money. That's why I say 5% of my communications is you're a billionaire. But I got to pull you this way. And that's why we go back to that painting that's very apropos. A Chinaman, a Mexican, and a black kid. Me. I'm going to add a Vietnamese now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys, success leaves clues. How many fucking clues do I have to show you? But losers leave clues as well. And for the most part, not 100% of your family are losers. But vis-a-vis -vis creating generational wealth, I'm pretty safe to say that almost all your relatives are losers. Because I, <laughs> unless you're lying in the paperwork, nobody in this fucking room alluded to a grandparent, a parent that had gener made a whole shitload of money. Somebody made 20 million, somebody made 5 million, but no, nobody made hundreds of millions. No one. So, I mean, um, as I say, unless your parents were Andrew Agassi and Steffi Graf, both world champion, gold medalists, many grand slams, their kids have role models. The Williams sisters, father was a fanatic, and they became world champs. Tiger Woods' father was a fanatic, and he became who he is. And then there's you and the rest of us. My dad was a fanatic, but not about that. What else about the Ford movie, if anything? Yes, sir. Maybe even more important than the car he built was coming up with the assembly line. Oh, yeah. Everybody, not everybody, I don't forget it, but almost everybody forgets that. Now, somebody would have come up with an assembly line down the road, but he did it then. I mean, that's genius. He went from uh, uh, six cars a day to 50 cars a day or something, whatever it was, where they were spending eight hours on a car and then now two hours on a car. I mean, that, that is really thinking outside the box, truly outside the box. But he was a gifted guy. But he treated his son, Edsel, like a piece of shit until he died. Nothing the kid ever did made any sense. 
Now, I can appreciate that because nothing my children do satisfies me. I, can, I understand that. But not that they're a piece of shit. And I told you last night, I told some of you, uh, we talked to our daughter at 6.30, and uh, she's alone in Chicago, Christmas, with her dog. And it, pull, I, it did pull a little at my heart, a little, for maybe two seconds. And I, you're a big girl, sweetheart. You're living large, and they, you're making the big bucks. It's part of the pay price to action. And that was the way I wiggled off the hook. And then she says, thank you for the, the, the money we gave her. And I said, well, if I knew you were living that large, we wouldn't have given you so much money. And uh, the, uh, so that was my way of diverting that I might say something gushy, wishy, soft. Um, but uh, the, uh, and, and she'll see this, assuming we ever get back on YouTube, she'll see this and uh, she'll lay in, 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 in the bushes waiting for me. To, until she could spring it on me. Because one of the things, and I tell you, when you get a no answer, by the way, at the banks, what w would I have to do, what would it take for you to consider this a credible, acceptable transaction? So when I tell them no over the years, Daddy, what, wh how do we have to change it to get it, make it yes from you? I've heard this a thousand times from the kids, our kids. But it will... Flip some financial institutions, but if it doesn't flip them, it will at least open the door again. And if it, you know, in some cases, they'll come out and tell you, you know, it's your CFO. We don't think he's CFO material. And in some cases, kids, when you open that door, it's you. You're not CEO material. So when they tell you you're not CEO material, what do you tell them? Or what do you do? What's your action? Yeah, I, I say get fucked. Yes, sir. Huh? Okay, or you can find a, a great CEO. So the door's not closed. And our job is, remember from when you walk in, you want to get them on their back foot. What's your lending credit limit? Blah, 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 blah. Secured, unsecured. All those things that are in the script. Because all we need is a little leverage, just a little leverage. But we still have to, you know, and when we, we uh, come up short, it's almost always because we haven't put out enough effort, enough volume. And then when we do, the kids make it happen. One of the thing I just read from Canada, 60-40, uh, you know, no 2% two, 2 interest. No, I mean, this kid, and I, rem I remember who the kid is, a nice enough kid, but he's still a kid. I don't know, 26, 27 years old. And um, um, the other part of the letter is he, uh, try, uh, he tried to do it, even though the South African uh, streets are paved with gold, he couldn't make it work in, go in South Africa. He's a South African, I left that part out, and he went to Canada to make it happen. Canada accepts anybody. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, they accept anybody. Um, no, he's a South African, grown up, and he went from South Africa to Canada because for whatever reason, um, he, uh, he I, I, and I didn't even tell you, he didn't write me about it. He says, I was embarrassed. Uh, you know, uh, Anelli's knocking him dead. Now, this is a white South African, not a black South African, which shouldn't make any difference. Uh, the, uh, I just uh, went to Canada because I had to get the fucking thing done. Uh, his goal was to get it done before the year end, and, and he, he signed the shit on uh, Christmas Eve, and, uh, and that's and it's a big deal. It's a pretty big fucking deal. Twenty million in revenue pre-COVID, uh, fourteen million in revenue this year. Sixty forty. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it looks just like the, the except bigger numbers, uh, and bigger and better numbers than I showed you in the illustrating example yesterday. because he wasn't willing to take no for an answer. Not dissimilar to the Belgian guy that went to the Netherlands. If you're not willing to take no for an answer, you can get a lot of shit done in life. And uh, don't confuse me with the facts. I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. All these things these guys feel. 
my, my father was a, prim, uh, a primary example. He, he uh, you know, the, and, uh, as I told you last night, I was raised, everybody's an asshole. And in time, they will prove it to you. you know, and part of that asshole, a thief, a crook. A man that you can't trust his word. These were all part of the definition of an asshole. And he said, over time, Dan, Danny, they will prove to you that they're not worthy of your friendship. And he was right. Fuck, he was right. And whereas you weren't. And again, part of the role model, um, because my parents didn't want me to speak English with a Mexican accent, or a Spanish accent. They never spoke Spanish in the house. They made me listen to classical music since I'm three, four years old, instead of the rock and whatever they, back in the 50s. I played tennis, I played golf, and I took ballroom dancing. And you had to have a suicide fucking wish in, in, in the hood to play tennis, golf, Free lessons at the park and ballroom dancing. I mean, fortunately, I was a big kid. If I had been a little kid, I mean, I fuck, I probably got beaten to death. But so my parents, in their way, were setting it up. And then the, the coup de grace, after I tried to kill my teacher, is my mother made my father move from the hood to the valley, the San Fernando Valley, in a house we couldn't afford because she thought it was the environment. And then when I went to the valley, and I still got in trouble. She finally dawned on her, it's Danny. Because I didn't get quite as much trouble. Because the kids wouldn't fight in the valley. Where I come from, they fight. You, you drop a nickel and they fight for it. But in the San Fernando Valley, I was an anomaly. And they didn't, you know, they, they weren't willing to fight. So I got away with more murder. Not murder, literally. But my parents were doing their very, and it was actually my mom that pushed that. Anything else about Ford? Okay, YouTube, thank you.